for my electric budget bike conversion. So essentially this is just regular uh, sheet steel. Um, I don't know the exact diameter. Um, it's just a mild steel. And I used that process to design this uh, plate here in, um, in the computer aided design software I use as Fusion. So it really helped me to get this plate made uh, front and rear for the motor. Had some slits cut out there so we can get some airflow and cooling. And then I'm also going to just make like some covering here to cover my brushes for the motor. But that is a very important part because this not only holds the front of my motor, but as far as for my build, it's going to be a stressed member of the frame. Uh, just because the original motor was uh, a structural member of the frame. So this also needs to serve the purpose of that. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this for you just so you can see what the design looks like. And then I'll be back and give you some more updates. So guys, so this is the final result of the motor and its casing or motor housing. Basically, you saw how I was able to bolt these little tubing over the thread all bolts here. This is what I'm gonna use to extend the plates out to one, mount the motor to the motorcycle frame and then second, make the mounts for the batteries. So it turned out really well. The casing is very strong. This is gonna be a stressed member in the frame so overall it turned out well i'm going to paint it all black and i have some good clearance here for my chain as you can see there the chain is going to go kind of as far out as possible so we can clear all these bolts here make sure we don't have any issues with that but uh these mounting points here are going to be very very strong just to mount just uh to weld that flat plate there it almost looks like a zero motor guys does it not or just a little bit of that square back i, I kind of like that design so that's what i went with but yeah guys so this is the motor mount portion of the budget build. Uh, I'll include all of the links and just a quick parts list. Everything can be found at Ace Hardware. This is just some uh, some steel tubing here that goes over whatever size thread all you uh, select. So it, this can vary a lot, uh, but this is kind of the overall design that I'm using. And the reason why I use this design because it's very modular. Nothing is is welded everything can be unbolted and put to many different models of bikes so i want to make sure that i follow that design so alrighty guys so this concludes part two which is the motor mount creation and the uh bracket i call it the bracket box uh which is going to be my stressed member for my budget bike
and this is from my favorite side of the bike I really like the way that that motor mount turned out and I didn't tell you guys that I had to get a replacement wheel that's why one of the wheels is gold one is black because it had a we had a flat spot in one of the rims and I didn't want to run into any safety issues so I just bought another wheel actually it doesn't quite fit the swing arm it's from a 636 this is a 6R it's a little wider but it'll work for now for a temporary mock-up because most of the braking is done by the front so I'll just keep it that way until I find a actual another wheel but yeah this is how it looks spinning from this side and now I'm actually using my Magura twist throttle grip these can be purchased for around $50 uh, I'll post some links below but yeah it also, this can um, this throttle grip works really well with my all tracks control it's a 0 to 5 ohm potentiometer type throttle so yeah here we go just a little bit of chain clatter but other than that she's very smooth and this throttle actually gives a lot more modulation versus the uh, the other style so I'm really glad I can get a lot more feel because it's much more progressive yeah I'm liking the way this is coming along guys this is gonna be pretty insane once I get the actual Chevy Volt batteries on there and cranking out over 72 volts because right now it's probably about 50 well that's actually a 48 volt battery uh, so yeah I'm almost doubling the power so we should see an almost double increase in RPM to that we're tired but it's not spinning slow at all based on my estimation that's probably about 40 miles an hour see that motor mount kind of move a little bit so I need to get that bolted down but yeah guys stay tuned I'll post the next update soon alrighty so guys now that you've seen the battery mounting in the frame I'm actually going to mount it a little bit lower than I originally showed you I want to keep the center of gravity as low as possible on the bike so what I'm going to do now is show you my simple motor mounting uh, solution uh, this is just a piece of uh, square stock steel mild steel and what I'm going to do is as you saw in the previous clip where I made this entire motor uh, assembly where I'm holding the motor as a structural member of the frame now as you can see there it bolts to the existing mounts where the original motor mounted and then I made that little uh, some round tubing there and all I'm going sorry about that all I'm going to do is now just weld this uh, square stock to that metal bracket there that I made and then it's going to attach onto the bottom of the motor on this side it literally is just going to weld there and I measured the distance from there to there it's three and a half inches so I'm going to go ahead and cut that now and show you that process and then I'm going to weld it in and then the motor will be mounted and secured as you can see everything is still lined up right there after I showed you that spinning video of the wheel everything is perfectly aligned and I have chain adjustment in the back as normal and let's go ahead and do that right now Alrighty, so guys, here is the final result of my bottom motor mount. Not the prettiest welds ever, but I can guarantee I got a lot of heat penetration. And it may not look straight on the table, but this is actually the, the best way I was able to do it and have it a perfectly aligned with the motor and the chain straight. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and cool this part down. Uh, but this is the bottom motor mount bracket for the bike. See the design there, see how the, the uh, thread all uh, thread rods go through these and then they correspond with each spot on the frame but yeah super simple part and uh, very inexpensive to make so let's go ahead and get this on the bike and test fit it installed that bracket I just showed you and if you look under there at how it looks see how it's supporting the motor there there's the welds and it's solid as a rock now the next thing I'm going to do is create a bottom plate from this one to the bottom of the battery. Come up, connect there on both sides to support the weight of the battery, and all that will be braced on this. So this battery is probably about 70 pounds, uh, which is going to be perfectly fine to mount with the steel coming off of this brace here, but you couldn't move it if you wanted to. And the chain tension. 
is also very good. Got good clearance, but we're, we're not hitting anything. So it is taking shape, guys. See, there's my chain alignment there. And it actually rides on the stock chain guard, uh, the chain slider. So that works very, very well. It looks pretty good. There's how it looks from the step out. And there's my little lead acid battery or seal lead, lead acid battery for my 12 volt system for my contactors. And go ahead and do the next step, guys. Here we go. Next step, let's go ahead and get these batteries mounted into the frame. Start out with three pieces of angle steel. And in the background, that's Brian recording his for his channel also. So we have these three pieces of angle iron. One is the length of the bottom of the motor. And then the other one is the length of the bottom of the motor. I'm sorry, batter, bottom of the battery to the top of the mounting point. So all I want to do is make a square frame here. That square frame mounts there. These pieces will be welded to each other just like that. And then I'm going to take that bar. We'll take another bar and connect these, this square that I'm going to make to the bottom of my motor plate, which is a structured member. So I'm going to go ahead and bring you guys along for that as I construct this box and weld it in. Okay, bracket is welded, as you can see here. I think my welds are getting a little bit better. I've been practicing. So that's there. That's how that looks. So we're gonna go ahead and get ready to install it on the bike and hold the battery. Let's go. Alrighty guys, day two. So what I'm gonna do on today's episode is take this bar of chrome molly steel and finish the battery box or finish the actual bracketing. So I'm gonna take this tube here and connect to the bottom corner of the bracket to uh, stop that swinging in, as I told you earlier. See how it kind of swings? Just a quick weld, from, I'm gonna go from this bolt here to that part over there. And then on the other side, I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna come from the uh, kickstand bolt and go straight into the corner, maybe May have to go a little bit lower, may have to go from this bolt, but I don't know. They're not exactly the same dimensions on each side, but we'll figure out what's the best option. Uh, but most likely it's going to be from the kickstand bolt. I might have to extend it out some and maybe go to this corner, but I want to keep it as uniform as possible. So yeah, I'm going to look into both sides and bring you guys along for the ride. And then after that is complete, we'll have a sh completed structured member battery box, and then we'll get to the next step which is going to be powering up this thing and then I'll add fairings and stuff later and we'll do a total analysis of the bike make sure that we stayed on budget and I'll show you guys the cost breakdown but in the meantime take a look over there I actually rode the Brammo today to the shop as you can see it's charging on the shops 220 and look at the power output guys it's charging at 24 amps so it's putting about 2.3 kilowatts uh, I don't know if that's can't maybe per no it's it's definitely 2.3 kilowatts as far as the input power so this charge is extremely fast and on my 10 mile trip I only used about 20% of the battery so the battery is in very good health everything is good and as you look there's uh, Brian's project there the supercar build with all of its uh, Chevy Volt batteries and the two bikes are gonna look really cool together guys got the Bramo and we got the budget bike which will be very very soon a high powered drag bike uh, or a race bike because uh, I don't want to have to deal with the titling on both bikes but yeah let's go ahead and get this thing built So these tabs go for the longer one. I'm gonna bolt it here to that little mounting bracket here. And then it corresponds right there on that side. And then I'm just gonna tack it to this to create my entire frame cradle or battery cradle that is. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill these holes right here. This is a simple drill. And then I'm gonna give you a quick time lapse of how I install it on each side. So yeah. The welds, I think they're looking a little bit better, guys. I've been practicing. Please don't judge me. 
But yeah, so that'll complete the battery cradle. Here we go. And there you have it folks, the bars are complete. So this structure is very structurally sound now. We got a linkage here, mating to there. And that completes the frame mounts. As you can see that bar there, braced on there like that is making that a very, very strong structure. There's no more of that back and forth play. And then it also gives me room to put some body panels on there without running much interference. And when I get ready to upgrade the motor later, that gives me a lot of space on both sides to work with. See, it's well far out. I could put a motor almost twice the size in there, in the same space, same real estate. And that's what my goal was. So yeah, stay tuned for the next episode where the next thing I really have to do is I may just use like a some type of clamp here to go here and here to pull the batteries there to fix that side to side. And then I'm gonna come forward with some little tabs here, weld there and secure the batteries that way. So yeah, super exciting stuff, guys.